Good evening. My name is Anu Mitra, and I'm a docent at the Cincinnati Art Museum. Today, I want to welcome you to Cam Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each weekday, a staff member or volunteer will share an object from the permanent collection and pose questions for discussion. Please check back at 10 a.m. every day for a new work and a new conversation. Our object of focus today is Krishna Reddy's Water Lilies from 1960. Krishna Reddy is best known as a master intaglio printer and his viscosity printing. printing. For our reference, intaglio printing is the process in which a plate is incised with an image, covered in ink, and pressed onto paper. Viscosity is the state of being thick, sticky, and semi-fluid in consistency due to internal friction. Collaborating with British surrealist Stanley William Hater and fellow Indian artist Kaiko Moti, Reddy developed a printing method based on the use of colored inks of various viscosities to produce complex images from a single plate. Many of the images produced from this technique were abstract, suggesting cellular forms, radiant, uh, radiant flowers and whirlpools, often infused with the tone of surrealism. Now, who was Krishna Reddy? Reddy was born in a small village in Andhra Pradesh, India in 1925, where his father was a farm worker who also painted temple murals. Reddy played an important role in the shape in the shaping of modernist art in India, belonging to a generation of artists who had gained international recognition after India's independence from England in 1947. Like many of his Indian colleagues, he was knowledgeable about contemporary European art, but was working in fresh directions, demonstrating that abstract art was not a Western invention, as it is often assumed to have been but had distinctive sources and forms in other cultures as well. Reddy's talent as an artist was evident early on. He attended Rishi Valley School, founded by the philosopher and spiritual teacher, Jiddu Krishnamurti, with a curriculum based on community service and collaboration. In his early teens, he studied at Shantiniketan in West Bengal, where the writer and artist Rabindranath Tagore had opened an experimental university. The school, Vishwa Bharati University, was designed as an alternative to the colonial British model of education. Rather than focusing on rote classroom learning, Tagore advocated free form study conducted in outdoor settings. Art and science were in balance. In addition to painting and sculpture, Reddy studied botany, biology, and biochemistry, pursuits that, do, that would do much to produce the organic imagery of his later art. He was mentored at the university by the artists Nandalal Bose and Ram Kinkar Baij, and he quickly graduated to the role of instructor himself. In 1949, with recommendations from Krishnamurti, who would remain a lifelong influence, Reddy traveled to London to study at the Slade School of Fine Arts, apprenticing with the sculptor Henry Moore. But it was a move to Paris in the early 1950s that brought a major shift in the focus of his art. In Paris, Reddy met artist Constantine Brancusi and through him was introduced to cafe discussions on art and many famous artists. He also joined Atelier 17, a printmaking workshop founded by William, Stanley William Hayter. In Paris, he began to apply sculptural techniques to printing, transforming metal plates into the equivalent of relief sculptures. In Reddy, variations in the depth and texture of the incised line and changes in the surface textures, combined with the controlled viscosity and intensity of the printing ink inks, helped produce prints of unusual richness. Reddy said, we can work directly on the plate, carving the image with hand and machine tools, as in painting and sculpture. 
With these methods of selectively depositing both the intaglio and surface colors on the same plate, we can print all the colors in one operation. In this way, we can achieve a color print of great graphic quality with a directness never realized before. In the water lilies from 1960, Red D focuses on the cellular elements of the flower while also transferring the sensation of floating water lilies to a timeless frame. Thus, the water lilies are rendered both in microscopic cross section and also convey feelings of impermanence. Reddy used subtle variants of color in an immersive manner. And in this image, he was using hand tools to gouge and dig through the plates, like a farmer plowing the land. The point of his art, he said, was to fully participate in the movement of life and see it tending toward happiness. It is not only discovering your freedom, but it is also a lesson to fully participate and enter into a state of experience, to learn what the flower is, to go inward, layer after layer. In recent years, Indian modernism has gained increased recognition and Reddy's work has been very much in the picture. In a series of three 2011 exhibitions called Modernist Art from India at the Rubin Museum, he was represented by drawings of figures he made in 1940. And his prints had a central place in the 2016 Metropolitan Museum of Art exhibition called Workshop and Legacy, Stanley William Hayter, Krishna Reddy, Zarina Hashmi, which confirmed the collaborative spirit of his long and prolific career. In 1972, India awarded him the highest civilian honor, the Padma Shri, in recognition of his distinguished contributions to art. He died in 2018 at the age of 93, survived by his wife and daughter. Reddy kept close contact with India all his life, but he made New York City his home. My question for you today is what method or technique would you introduce to your art or craft making or work setting practices to make the process better? Think about it and note your comments below. Thank you for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you at a future time.